Hello everybody, you're very welcome to this episode of Object Oriented Programming. In this episode we're going to look at strings and how to manipulate strings and how to deal with them and things like that. So we'll start off very simply, we'll look at string manipulation. So that is to say we'll look at what is a string and, and how, how do we play around with them. So we'll start with the obvious stuff. A string can be described by using double quotes, hello, or single quotes, world. If we want to put a string over multiple lines, we can use three single quotes or three double quotes, that's C and D. And as long as we don't terminate it at the end of the first line, it goes on to the second line, no problem. And one other way we can create a string is through composition, it's E there, where we just have three separate strings, we put them in brackets, and that joins them together. So if we were to say print A, B, C, D, and E, we'd get hello, we'd get world, we get a multiple string line, we get more multiple strings, and then uh, most interestingly, I think the one in brackets, three strings, strings together, the brackets just say, join them up, so it'd be the same as saying three plus strings plus together, same thing, the, the brackets indicate composition in this case. So we know that already. There are some uh, built-in methods we can use, of course, with the string type. One of them is called count, one of them is called find, and one of them is called rfind. So what does count do? If the string is hello world and I say count o, the single letter o, I'm asking how many times does o appear in the phrase hello world. If I do string count l, it counts the number of occurrences of l in the phrase hello world. If I do string find o, what it means is look for the letter o in the string and at the first occurrence of it, tell me what position that's in. It's the same with L, what position is the L in? And it's worth noting here, the count starts at zero, so it treats the string as an array. So if it returns position zero, that means the string is at the first position in the string. And R find is, it's the same as find, except that it starts at the end instead of the, the beginning, so it's a reverse find or search from the right find, whatever. So the answers we get there are, there are two O's in the phrase hello world, and there are three L's. Two in hello and one in world. If we start at zero, the letter O first occurs at position five or zero, one, two, three, four, and the first L occurs at position two or one, two, three. If we're starting from the right or the reverse, find the first O occurs at position seven, which is the eighth position in world, and the L occurs at position nine or the tenth position. It's just the, the, the last L before the word world. So if we find, we scan from left to right. If we are find, we're reversing find. We scan from right to left. So that's the basic functions. We would have seen all of that already. We can also do additional things on strings. We can do split. If we say string.split, what that means is create an array and split the string on the basis of whatever delimiter character or breaking up character I've stated in the brackets. In this case what I'm saying is use space as the breakup. If the string is as it is above, hello world, how are you? It'll create an array of one, two, three, four, five elements. Uh, an element called hello, and one called world, how are you? Interesting enough, once we've got the array split up, we want, want to rejoin it. One way we can rejoin it is say Say the character we want to join the string with, so let's say we say hashes, and we join string two up together again, it'll join the array of single strings into, a, into one single string, and it'll be hello, hash world, hash how, hash r, hash you. Another interesting thing we can do with the original string is we can use replace, so what replace does is it says take any character in the phrase string and replace it with something else. So if we say replace the spaces in the phrase hello world how are you with star star, it'll be hello star star world star star how star star our star star you star star. And the last uh, command we can use is partition. So partition splits the string in half on the basis of whatever character we say. So S5 says partition on the space. So it divides the string into two bits. One is hello and the, the other half is world, how are you? Or we can do a right partition. So starting from the right, split on the first space. So we, we end up with 
hello world, how are and you as a separate partition. So if we want to see those in action, the split splits the string into each separate word on the base of the space. The join joins that array of separate words back into a single string. The replace replaces the spaces with double stars. And then the partition, as we can see, splits the, the string into three bits. The hello, the space, which is the partitioning element, and then the rest of the string from the left. And then from the right, it's hello world, how are the partitioning space and you. So we call that partitioning character either a, a partition or a delimiter. So that's the basic stuff we can do on strings. Now let's look at ways we can format strings. If we have the phrase, and we saw this a little in previous weeks, if we have a, a phrase, hello, open curly brackets, close curly brackets, you are currently open curly brackets, close curly brackets, and I say print that message, but with dot format, and then two parameters, Damien and asleep, what that means is the first time you see open and close curly brackets, stick in the first parameter and the second time stick in the second parameter. So what will that give us? It'll give us hello Damien, you are currently asleep. Which I probably should have said hello guys, you are looking at this video and you are currently asleep, but anyway. So that is string formatting using, it's called indexed formatting, but sometimes called unindexed formatting. We'll see why in a second. Because we can also say hello open curly bracket zero, close curly bracket, you are currently open curly bracket one curly bracket, your name is open curly bracket zero curly bracket. And then if we do print standard format Damien and asleep again, it will print out, hello Damien, you are currently asleep, your name is Damien. So we've indicated that the first parameter is called zero, and the, the zero, the element is Damien, that occurs twice at the hello Damien, and your name is Damien. And the second element sleep is the one. So that's simple formatting. Just to reiterate the terminology, I prefer to call the, um, the first type, the open curly braces with no number in between unindexed arguments, and I prefer to call the ones with the numbers indexed arguments. This terminology varies a little bit from book to book or practitioner to practitioner, but I think when there's no number, let's say it's unindexed and when there is a number, we'll call it indexed. Perfect. So we could even write a program um, that would print out code as follows. We create a string on multiple lines, starting with template, and we have three inverted commas, so that means everything until the, the closing three inverted commas is just a string and treated as such. So in this case, the string looks like a bit of Java code to me. It's public class, takes in a parameter, two curly braces, then says public static void main string args, which is standard Java terminology, don't worry about it. And then it says this dot out dot print line number one. So then we say format this sticking in the word my class for position zero and hello world for position one. So as I said, the three quotes means it's over multiple lines. The format also, I will note, replaces every, every double open cl or close brace with a single one because uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't want to get confused. The brace, that's an indexed or indexed argument with a normal brace. So if I do brace, brace, it means print out a single brace. And then as before, we, we replace whatever the zeroth parameter is with, in this case, my class, and the first parameter with the phrase, hello, print hello world. So that will print out the phrase public class, my class, open, open single curly brace, public static void, main string args, open single curly brace, system data to print line, print hello world. Doesn't matter the, specific, the specifics of Java in this case. All we need to know is that we can create a template method and then we can supply different parameters to it, which is great. So then if we had a program that we want to print out goodbye world or whatever, we wouldn't have to rewrite all the code. We'd just change the template parameter, the format parameter going in, which is really handy. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the concept of a mail merge, but sometimes if I have to write out 
a hundred letters to a hundred different people and the same letter, I just need to change the name in the letter. In Microsoft Word, it allows you to generate a, a list of hundred names, then specify the point, points in the letter where that person's name is in it, and just run the program so it generates a hundred letters from the single template letter. So this is the same process. If you're not familiar with the mail merge, just Google it, and that's exactly what we're doing here. Another uh, instance where we can um, format strings, but instead of using numbers, using names called keyword arguments instead of indexed arguments, we create a template that takes in parameters from mail to mail, subject and message. So they're inside the curly braces. And then later on define what they mean. So when we do our format, we say that from email is damien.gordon.dat.ie, to email is your name, the message is, here's some mail for you, hope you enjoy the message, and the subject is, you have mail. So the format command will take the parameter called from email, which is my email address, and then it will replace that phrase up in the template where it takes parameter from email. So what's it going to look like? It's going to look like this. I'm going to get a message printed out saying, from me to you, subject you have mail. Here's the mail, hope you enjoyed the message. So we can see all I need to change is the to mail parameter. And then I could send this message over and over again to different people. So we can imagine if I had the, an array of two emails. So if I had an array of email addresses I want to send to, and I just iterate through that list of emails and just don't change anything else. The from is the same. If the message and subject are exactly the same, then all I need to do is iterate through the list and boom, I've got a program that's sending emails to hundreds of people potentially. And all I need to do is change the single element, which is the to email address. Uh, if, we, if we want to be really naughty and mix unindexed and keyword arguments, here's a phrase where we're printing out open close braces, open braces, label, close braces, and then open, close braces. And then what I say for the formatting is, X is the first unindexed element. X plus one is the second unindexed element because there's no name on it. And then the third element is called label and it, it's the equal sign. So what that means is, the first X goes into the first unindexed element the X plus one goes into the second unindexed, but the label name goes in between. So in other words, what this will print out is X equals X plus one, X assigned X plus one, which is a complicated way of typing out a very simple message. But nonetheless, we can imagine how this gives us flexibility in terms of how we can print out strings. So we can mix both labeled or keyword and unindexed. We can't mix indexed and unindexed, so that confuses the system a little bit. One other interesting thing we can do is create, as I was saying, an array of values and we want the, the, the string parameter to iterate through them. So in this case, we've created a variable called emails and it has two addresses, my address and your address. And we've got a message that has both a subject, you've got mail and a message. Here's mail for you. And then in our template, we say the first variable, which is emails, the first element of that, so that's zero, open square brackets, zero, put that in the from. So it's from DamienGordon.com. Who's it to? It's to the first variable, which is emails, the second element of that, which is you. And then the message, the subject is the message variable, and inside the message variable, it's the subject parameter. So we can see under message with two parameters, subject and message. So the message is you've got mail, and then the message part of message is the last bit. And if we were print this out, formatting emails and message, what do we get? Oh, actually, that's better. Here's arrows showing what everything. From is the zeroth element of the zeroth variable, which is Damien Gordon. Zero one is your address. The subject is you've got mail and the message is here's some mail for you. So when we print that out, 
if we wanted to, instead of using the message name, we could replace message with just one, because we've got zero, so we could replace it with one, and have one subject, which is you've got mail, and one message, which is here's some mail for you. And then we have to change the format, just to, instead of saying message, get message, just leave it as message. And then boom, it says from me to you, you have mail, here's some mail. So there's way loads of way we can do it unindexed, indexed, parameterized, with container lookups. There's loads of ways we can produce the exact same message. But the more sophisticated we do it, the more opportunities there are to generate multiple messages quite quickly. Here's what that looks like in Python. If we were to create a class called email, and we had this, the INIT class, which takes on parameters, the self, which is the object self, then a from, a to, a subject, and a message, and our INIT does what they all do. It just assigns the variables that we pass in to self dot those variables. There's nothing weird there. And then if we say we have a, a variable of type email called email that takes in parameters, my address, your address, you have mail, and here's some message for you. And then we create a template from the from the zeroth element, take the from address, the to address, the subject, and the um, message, and then we print out that email variable that we've generated of class email, or the email object, really. And we get the exact same message again, but that's how we do it in Python. Now we can see we can do it in Python, we can see how we put in a loop, and we'd be changing the to address, and we could generate lots and lots of different emails or lots of different emails to different people. So that's pretty much it for our basic introduction to strings and string manipulation. Thanks very much. We'll see you on the next episode.